It's a thousand songs in your pocket. The iPod. If I had never dropped out, I would have never dropped in on that calligraphy class, and personal computers might not have the wonderful typography that they do. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards ten years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path and that will make all the difference. I was lucky. I found what I loved to do early in life when I was 20. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love and that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking, don't settle. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me, and since then, for the past 33 years, I've looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. No one wants to die. We gotta risk everything. Great artists, Dylan, Picasso, Newton, they risk failure. And if we wanna be great, we gotta risk it too. Even people who wanna go to heaven don't wanna die to get there. And yet, death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it. And that is as it should be because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It's life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Right now, the new is you. But someday, not too long from now, you will truly become the old and be cleared away. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it's quite true. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Were the words, stay hungry, stay foolish. It was their farewell message as they signed off. Stay hungry, stay foolish. And I have always wished that for myself. Because people will never stop believing that they can get more out of something. Whether it be their jobs, their marriage, their money, their lives. It's the belief in the limitless, the impossible. That no matter what you dream, you can do it. When you grow up, you tend to get told the world is the way that it is. Your life is just to live your life inside the world and try not to bash into the walls too much. That's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is that everything around you, the 
you call life was made up by people that are no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. You can build your own things that other people can use. It's to shake off this erroneous notion that life is just there and you're just gonna live in it versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. And once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. And now, as you graduate to begin anew, I wish that for you. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Thank you all very much. I had a self-defense mind, I was aware. Where I come from and where I grew up, you had to be aware, you had to be able to defend yourself. So that's, that's how I got into it. You know, society tells you, growing up, you should, you should fantasize about kicking a ball and dream about that, but it didn't really interest me. I tried to maybe pretend.